Hey guys and welcome to another new video in this Python programming tutorial. In this video we're going to do a hard cascade frontal face detector so we can detect faces that come into a, a webcam frame. In this video we're going to use the, um, the OpenCV library which we can first of all like start with um, installing from the from the pip install. So if we're going to enter our command prompt there we can type in pip3 install and then install the OpenCV package from here which is called OpenCV's Python and if you're into now I've already downloaded the downloaded package here but else it will just like download here and you can just import it in Python with this command here um, import cv2 and then we're going to use the library to like open up the, the webcam and do some different kind of modifications on the on the video frame and then later on we're going to do some some calculations so we can like estimate where in the picture we have detected a person and like the purpose purpose of, of doing like this um, this uh, frontal face um, detector here could like be used for for some other application like for example if we had if we for example had uh, like here I have I have a drawing here with two eyes and two pupils and then we have the camera in the middle here then we can have some like different kind of applications that is like detecting a person that comes into the, uh, with webcam and then the pupils are like looking and moving towards the person that, that appears in, in the webcam frame. So like this is like the purpose of of doing this um, example here in Python and we're going to do some some calculations for both pupils like in what angle they have to look at so, so like they, they look towards the person that appears uh, in the image. So if we go back here to Sublime Text um, first of all, we, we import, as, as I said, we import the OpenCV library and then the math library because we're going to use some um, some geometry to, ca to calculate the angles in in the frame. So first of all, here we just set up some different kind of uh, resolutions here. I just go with the with the, um, with the 1280 pixels by 720. Like you can use other resolutions as well if you don't have like um, a good computer and it takes a lot of uh, processing power and stuff like that. But in this case, I'll just go with this resolution here and do my uh, front frontal face detector on, on that on that resolution. So when we need to do like a cascade classifier in OpenCV, there is a built-in function to do that. And first of all, here we just have a variable that we call like our, which is our our face cascade, and then we use the function uh, cascade classifier from the OpenCV library. And the, the cascade classifier takes an argument like. Um, what kind of data that we want to like train our classifier on, and in this case here, there's some like pre pre trained or like pre built uh, frontal face ca classifiers, or we can also have like eye classifiers and a lot of other other object classifiers that is already built in from the OpenCV library. So in this case, we're just going to use the hard casket frontal face um, default um, classifier here, and and this is just the file here. I can open up the file here, and you can see like there's just a bunch of different kind of information that doesn't really make um, any sense if you haven't like seen it before or you don't know like how it works. But it's just like a lot of lines of um, of data that just gets that that just gets fed to the to the model here, and then it can like um, classify objects or like in this case frontal faces that appears in in the image. The second here is that we open up the, the video capture, so we open up the webcam here at the zeroth index and then we just store it in the cap, um, cap variable here and then we can do some different kind of operations with, with our uh, capture from now on. So first of all we just start with setting like the new resolution that we want to, to give our video frame here and then we just have some like uh, current IDs and face trackers list so we just initialize some variables that we're going to use because we're going to like keep track of people so Let's say we have like 10 people that get tracked inside um, inside the camera frame. Then each person will be um, will have an, an an unique ID, so we know like uh, what person that appears in the image. Um, and then we have like here we just define some some other like uh, variables that we need to do uh, that we need to know like for some calculations where we need to to know the width and the height of the of the of the frame. And then we also have like um, the, the FOV off the camera, like the horizontal FOV and the vertical FOV, and you have to go into like the specs in, in your camera to like to get these like exact uh, values. And then we have like our um, our finite while loop that just goes on and does all the operations while the camera and the program is running. And then first of all here we're just reading um, reading from our capture, so we're reading the the video frame into the frame here. 
and then we can use the frame here to do some different kind of, of um, operations. The third thing we, the first thing we're doing here is that we first convert our our frame to to grayscale. So we convert it from BGR colors to grayscale because when we're doing operation on our on our on our, on our image, we want to do it on grayscale because it doesn't really um, make that huge difference for. Uh, the computer to see to see colors or if they if, if it's just given a, a gray frame a grayscale image and we'll like do less operations if we have a grayscale picture because when we have bgr we have three channels for each pixel in in the image and for grayscale we only have like one channel from from zero to 255 so it's more it's better to use grayscale images when we're doing our operations and then later on when we have done our operations and did our uh, done our calculations then we can show the result and the, like the detection on the on the colored frame afterwards so first of all here we just have this uh, we use our uh, face casket that we that that we declared up here with the um, with the hard casket frontal face um, classifier and then we can then we just give them some some different kind of arguments with the like the the, the frame that we want to detect our our um, our faces in, and then our, some other like parameters like with the uh, scale factor and minimum neighbors and, and stuff like that. For the, these are just like some default parameters for this to take multi scale function that is built into to OpenCV as well. And then when we have like done our, our face detections, then our faces will be stored in this variable faces here. And then we can have a, a for loop that runs through like all the X, Y, X, Y coordinates in the picture. So where we have seen uh, the person in the picture and all, then also like the width and the height of the box that we want to uh, surround our, our like box or our detected face into. So we run through a for loop here um, to get like uh, through all these parameters in our detected faces. And then we uh, the, then we find the, like the center of the box. So we want to use the center when we're going to do some calculations with the uh, with the angle uh, later on. And then otherwise, like in our faces, then we have the the face trackers here, which is like here we just give our uh, each person that like or each frontal face that is detected in the image, we give them a unique key. And then we just have some 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 ID that is just incrementing. Um, so every new person that comes into the into the into the frame, it gets a new ID and it will just increment the ID. So we also know know like how many people are detected in the current in the current frame, and like we also like recognize that person um, in the frame. So if we go down here, we can see like we just we just uh, update um, down here in our face tracker. So first of all, we just get all like the the tracked IDs. And then we just like if if we want to do some different kind of uh, calculations or if if we want to like update the face trackers um from for the ids like we're just using some for loops here which is like kind of the same as we as we did up here where we just like update and um, the ids and the, and the faces that is tracked in in the image so like more some of the more fun parts is, is down here where we have like if we track some IDs then we want to do some some calculations of the, the tracked object in in the frame in this case we are tracking frontal faces so we want to um, calculate the angle from um, from the middle of the picture to like the angle where the person um, appears in the frame so first of all here we just get all our all our values from the face track so here we have this list with the with our face trackers and then we get like an id so as i said we, we declare an id for every person that is tracked in, in in the frame and then we take uh, one id one id at a time and then calculate an angle for for that id in the face trackers list here so to calculate the angle here we have like the send a value as we just Got from above where we uh, where we calculate like the center of the frame that we're surrounding the, the detected per, uh, person with, and then we can, uh, then we have some like uh, geometry and a different kind of like uh, algebra to 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 calculate the angles here and they're just like it's just formulas that we just plot in the numbers that we that we have and that we calculate into some um, um, formulas and then we just get get out the angles. So in this case here, we don't like we don't know like how far the person is away. So we have to do some uh, linear regression to find the distance from the camera to the person. And we can do this by like when when we see a person in the frame, then 
um, the frame, like the closer the person is to the, to, the, to the camera, the bigger is the frame. And then when it goes like further away, like the frame, like the, the, the surrounded box uh, of the person, it also gets smaller. So, and then you can do like with the, those points, you could do linear regression to, to estimate a distance from the camera to the person. And then we can also like calculate, um, calculate the angle that, um, that the person is from the center. And as we just saw that we, we want to calculate the, um, calculate the angles if we did, for example, like a, a project like this where we have like two eyes, it could be like a virtual eyes here or it can actually be like a real, real eyes and in, in like a practical real eyes in, in, in the real world. And then we can have like eyes moving around and tracking people that, that comes into the frame of the camera. And then we want to like calculate a, an angle that this pupil has to look at a person and then uh, another angle for this person and if we have our camera here we also have like a, a displacement um, of the pupil to the camera and we also have to like take that into account when we do our our calculations but then again it's just like um, algebra and geometry to like solve these problems and get the right numbers and plot them into some uh, defined um, uh, formulas where we can calculate um, calculate the angles that we need to give to our pupils to to be able to look around and like look exactly where the person uh, is tracked in the image. So I just turn off the webcam here so I can open up the, uh, the webcam and the video frame here in, in Sublime Text with our program. And if you hit Control B here, we'll open up the video frame and I'm back on the webcam again here. And we can see that my face gets detected and it gets surrounded with this uh, box around here. So if I move like further away from, from, the, from the camera here that then the, then the box gets smaller and if I move closer to the, to the, to the camera, like the box gets, gets bigger. And then we take the center of this box that I get, I get surrounded with. And then we do some calculations from, from the center of the box here um, to the middle of the frame here. So as we can see down here uh, where we print out the angle, we can see that if, I, if I'm right, right here, then I'm at the middle of the picture because we're at 90 degrees. Um, and if I move uh, a bit to one of the sides, we can see like the angle changes down here. So right now I'm like uh, 13 uh, degrees from the middle of the frame. So we can we can actually use this for a lot of different kind of purposes. Like for example, like right now we're just doing a, a frontal face detection, and then uh, our application was to like have some eyes or pupils like tracking, tracking and following the person walking or like the person that are in the frame. And we also have these like IDs, so if there were multiple persons in here, like uh, it will also track them as well, and every person would, would get get an, a unique ID, and then we can calculate the angle for for each of each of those IDs, and then we can like switch between persons and track different kind of purpose, uh, persons um, that occurs in the frame. So this is like very useful, and and it can be uh, used for many different kind of applications, where for example we can. Uh, we can have like other objects get that get tracked and we can have like for example a robot arm that that tries to like go to that angle and that position so we're right now we're tracking like where in the where in the frame and at what angle and the, the object occurs and then we can have like some uh, robot arm that is like going to that position as well so we can use this for a lot of different kind of purposes and it is very useful in this case we're just doing a simple uh, frontal face detections uh, face, face detection. We can also like have multiple object detections running in the same frame at the same time, and also tracking multiple objects. So it's a very useful. It's a very useful feature, and and it's really easy to just just get set up and get started with, and just like uh, play around with. So if you have some other different kind of ideas of of different kind of um, object detections that you want to see, I can you can leave a comment down under the video and uh, I, can, I can see what I can do and maybe try to come up with an example. And also if you have some uh, different kind of calculations that um, or different kind of features that we can extract from the, from the image and do some nice things with, like I'm also open to do that. So yeah, just uh, thank you guys for watching this video and remember to hit the subscribe button under the video and also the bell notification. Um, and also like this video if you like this content and that you just want more of it in the future. And currently I'm also doing this AI and computer vision tutorial in C++ with, alongside my uh, algorithms and data structure tool. So if you want to check one of those out, like I'll link to one of them up here. And then you can go check it out if you want to or else uh, I'll just see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.